So stock started off the day uh, very poorly before finding an intraday low point and rallying to a pretty bullish close. And we're going to break down today from a technical standpoint if this is the end of this bout of volatility or not and what's driving this and how does this bout of volatility compare to previous bouts so we can get an idea of how long this pullback is going to last, whether it's going to be more of a long term uh, multi month pullback potentially or if it's just gonna be a week or two or, or less. So I'm gonna break all that down uh, in today's video and we're gonna take a look at a trade idea uh, for a stock that kinda has gotten caught up in this uh, selling, um, but has a chart that despite the pullback has a more of a bullish pattern than even the broad market itself does. And we'll talk about how to take advantage of that. So let's go ahead and get started. Today is Wednesday, August the 7th, 2019. This is the Market Outlook from MarketScholars.com. My name is David Settle. All right, well, let's get started with the uh, S&P 500 on the Market Forecast Indicator. You can see um, we had a nice little rally off of the low today. We're still in the range, though, of Monday's range on the S&P 500. So uh, the range there hit a low of 28.22. Today's a low of 28.25. Uh, so two inside days, both of them uh, inside of Mondays, and, and really nothing changes until you break above, what is it, 2898. Uh, you'll see on SPY it's about 288, um, which we did briefly break above on SPY today. You know, not until we like break into that gap there will there be much, I mean, th th this, uh, we, until we get out of the inside day, so to speak, we don't have an inside day then you're really not going to be too bullish or for that matter too bearish either yet and remember we can go either way uh, at these levels we are sitting on the fibonacci support the fibonacci retracement the bottom of the fibonacci retracement zone we're smack dab in the middle of it right now sitting at the 50 percent level we've closed there the last couple of days uh, near that level after closing on the bottom on uh, monday uh, and of course, getting into that gap will get you back out through the top of that Fibonacci retracement zone, which would be you know, a positive development. You, remember, you see also this red line, that's the Fibonacci retracement of this market sentiment run that we're on right now. Uh, since the market sentiment low point here on December 24th, this is the current intermediate run uh, that obviously has ended because we have a dark red line and dark pink shading. And there, that's a bearish uh, pattern. Um, so we, you know, any new bounce we get off of this, like we had at the end of May, um, will be uh, a new intermediate low point, uh, which we would expect a one to three month rally to come out of it. Now, you know, again, we're, we, we saw some extremes, unlike in May, where the, the momentum line really got down to some extreme lows during this pullback. Um, you know, we did get some extremes on a couple of times in the momentum line during this intermediate rally, but this current pullback that we've gotten now did not get to intermediate lows because every time uh, we don't close on the lows, we've closed off of the lows and that's kept the momentum line from hitting extreme levels and really it's kept the near term line from getting down too low either. And it got down about as low as it did during this um, decline, but not as low as it got during these significant drops uh, that we saw last, um, last um, October and December. So um, that kind of shows you again that this is probably more of an intermediate pullback than the beginnings of a long-term market sentiment pullback. And then again, you know, in terms of the intermediate pullback, we're there. So we're already there. The intermediate line, depending upon how long we stay down here, the intermediate line might might go down below. And you know, when it stays down, there, it doesn't stay down there very long. And of course, when it gets below 10 on the daily chart. I mean, that's a significantly low uh, level for um, the um, for the market forecast. Just like we saw back here on that same day, the weekly candle, uh, you can see how the near-term line uh, got down below uh, the 10th percentile. The momentum line got down to extreme lows there. So that you know that can be that that was pretty bearish. We're not we're not even to that point here because of this long lower shadow that we're getting. And, and I mentioned on Monday's video that when you get a lot of selling early, in, you know, early in the week on Mondays, that can lead a lot of times to long lower shadows because it's hard uh, for those uh, early weak moves. And again, good example of this is last time China 
devalued their currency over the weekend. Um, and you can see that long lower shadow on Monday here in August that we eventually rallied up off of uh, the rest of the week, potentially doing the same thing here depending upon how we finish the next couple of days. Take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. You see a very similar pattern. It's intermediate line almost below the 20th percentile again. It doesn't stay oversold for very long unless we are in um, bear market mode. Um, and we're not because, the, as you'll see, the 50-day is still easily above the 200-day moving average. In fact, you can almost say, especially on the NASDAQ composite, that you got a little bit of an engulfing pattern here uh, with, the, with its, its short-term sentiment lines bouncing up a lot higher. Um, you know, the, the Dow Jones got above 50. If you take a look at the S&P 500, you know, they, it's all kind of bouncing up above 50 and potentially either setting up for a new bearish near-term high or setting up a new near-term run, which generally speaking, you know, with a new intermediate rally, uh, coming off of an intermediate low point, those first intermediate near-term runs can be really big. Unless we're coming off of extreme lows like this one, uh, they tend to be shorter. But but if we come up off of a nice, good, bullish, phantom um, green arrow, so to speak, on the intermediate line, uh, then those near-term runs, those initial near-term runs could last, you know, within that 7 to 12-day normal window, closer to the 12-day-plus time frame. Finally, the Russell 2000, which has been such a laggard, uh, you can see it's still kind of lagging even today. It's near term line, not above 50 yet, uh, while the other ones are there. It's intermediate posture, close to dropping below uh, 20 as well. All right, before we look at some other charts, I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mouse Over Our Logo, right here in the bottom right corner of your screen. Hit that red subscribe button that pops out. Also, hit the thumbs up icon down below the video. That tells us uh, that you like the video today, that you want us to do it again tomorrow. Quick way to give us feedback. You can do that right now while you're watching. Also, while you're down there, comment. What did you get out of the video today? As other people come to the, for the first time, let them know uh, what you're getting and why they should watch. Uh, the video. Uh, join our daily market outlook email list. There's a link right there popping out the top right corner of your screen. Uh, click on that link to subscribe. Uh, follow me on Twitter for more content like this in between videos from day to day and join our market outlook community that we've created on Facebook. Also, if you're watching our uh, video on our blog here at marketscholars.com, we actually invite you to subscribe to our site. You can do that for free up here. Click on uh, so this blue subscribe button at the top of the page. Um, that takes you to our, uh, our pricing page. Uh, you can subscribe for free uh, over here. Of course, there's also our monthly um, and monthly subscriptions and yearly uh, prices as well. I do have my uh, technical analysis class coming up here on Friday. That is one of the classes uh, within the monthly, uh, the monthly subscription, the monthly plus subscription uh, that you do get a free seven day trial for. Uh, so if that's interested you and you also get a Brandon's Dividend Growth Investing next Tuesday, um, click on this subscribe button to, su to subscribe, get that free trial, uh, and then the subscription starts after that seven-day window ends. So in that seven days, you'll get our technical analysis and dividend growth investing class, uh, as well as access to all the recordings uh, that we have in the past for those classes uh, so that you can check us out. Also, while you're on this page, we invite you to, to engage with us on social media. The more that you like and, and retweet our, our posts, uh, the more the social media platforms will, will push to you our stuff in your timeline. So we try to make that really easy for you. Just click this heart right here. Uh, it will open up this new window. You can like today's Market Outlook tweet. Click on that image. It takes you to your Facebook page. You can like tonight's Market Outlook Facebook post there and share it with others. And, of course, you can like this post on our blog. Uh, just really quickly by clicking on that button there. All right, let's get back to the charts. And you can see uh, starting to get a little bit of a lower shadow. This is on the Hakanyashi, of course. Uh, if you look at the regular candle, then you can really see a long lower shadow developing after this gap. And, of course, filling in that gap will be significant uh, for, the, for any potential bounce on the market if that ends up being the case. Um, but from a Hakanyashi standpoint, you know, again, we'll have, we have a pretty bearish candle uh, as it is, and next week's candle will more than likely also be pretty bearish too. You know, if you look at uh, the open here, 29.8351, and the close as of right now, um, you know, the the midpoint of that's 29.29. So that's where it's going to open next week, around there, because the close isn't done yet for the week. We still got a couple of days. 
Um, but 29.29, we're at 28.83. So it's not, it's not going to be easy for it to form a, a transition candle as early as next week. So expect still some more you know, pressure. Uh, more than likely that, that gap might hold, at least in the short term, as we trade around uh, the range that we've had on Monday uh, to see how far and if we do actually um, break down below that and actually close below. Because again, when you get closes below the 200-day moving averages, when you're not in a um, death cross environment like we did in May, those tend to be pretty darn bullish. You saw this back in J October of 2016. You saw that in October of 2014 as well. A lot of people kind of pointing this big move in bonds uh, today, uh, relating it to uh, October 2014. Uh, that was a close below the 200-day moving average, which ended up being pretty bullish uh, as well. So we'll see if we end up doing that, whether it's this week or next week, uh, within the next couple of weeks, uh, before we finally get that signal. Because, of course, from a PPO standpoint, we're not anywhere close to a death cross uh, coming up here on uh, the S&P 500. If we take a look at now the, uh, the three green arrow chart, then you notice, of course, you got three red arrows, and you know, and once you get three red arrows, and and we, you know, the trend ended. Of course, we got three red arrows, and we fell, you know, another few percent. So that typically means this trend is done, and we are in a bearish pattern here. The three red arrows and dark, and pink shading. Um, now, whether or not this ends up being the low point or not, it's another uh, remains to be seen. If you look at the two line versions of this chart, uh, we're obviously diverging here. Uh, with the MACD significantly to the downside and about as significant to the downside from a momentum standpoint as what we saw at the end of May uh, when it set that low point. And stochastics oversold at these levels, similar to the intermediate line, doesn't generally stay oversold for too long. Uh, and that ends up usually being the first green arrow. Uh, if and when we do get another set of three green arrows, uh, the first green arrow will most likely be the stochastics. Uh, so once you can see, you know, here you got the red, green arrow, kind of almost at the same time as the momentum line. You know, over here you got a, got a green arrow uh, with the moving average at the same time. But here we're so far below, um, and the momentum is so deep, and but we're not very far into the oversold zone. Uh, more than likely, we'll get that stochastics first, and then the MACD. Um, you know, where the eight-day crosses back up above. Uh, the excuse me, not that chart where the eight day crosses back up above the 200 day moving out or the 17 day, excuse me, that will get this um, blue line rising again above zero. And of course, getting above its moving average uh, like this is what gets you the green arrow. And that can occur at these low levels too. Uh, so once you get those two green arrows, then you know a low point's been kind of set in place. Now the question is are we going to be bullish enough to break through the eight and 17 and work our way up? Uh, through the 30 uh, at that point. If you take a look at the Bollinger Bands uh, for SPY, you can see that you know we're, we're trying to hold with some support uh, in this area. Of course, you got strong support at 280 right below from a volume standpoint. You are d below the point of control. So if we do bounce up, it's not going to be clear sailing, right? You've got, you know, we, we broke so far and so fast. Um, we do have now a... Um, we do have, it's going to be harder for it to break through that uh, resistance. But if, it, if and when it does, then again, it's back to clear sailing to the upside. It's really bullish to get above the point of control and also really bullish to get above the value area. We're not that far uh, below it here. Uh, the band, what you can see again how significantly lower we were here um, to get this far below uh, the, the moving average. That can be a sign uh, and with other signs like volatility surges and things, that can be a sign that we're headed towards a more long-term market sentiment. But when you look at some of these other signs, um, we didn't get those. Uh, so this can actually be a relatively bullish sign as well. We were so extreme on Monday. Uh, we'll see if that ends up holding and, and holding out um, and being more bullish. If you take a look here, there's the gap that we need to get above on SPY to really get a move on to the upside. And we're, we started to fill at the very end of the day. That's about as bullish of a close that we could possibly have. In fact, we've had, bull, we've had closes at the high of the day now 
uh, the last two days and really two of the last three we, we got really close to the high of the day even though it was a down day uh, last Friday so you know we've, we're, we're building up some volume in this area and you can see how little volume there is here so once you break into here it's it'll be easy for it to get up to 292 and there's obviously not nearly as much volume in these areas there will be some resistance in the short term uh, but once you get back up into here, that's where all the volume is at over the last four weeks. That's where the, the ceiling is as of right now. So, uh, But that little gap right there, you break through that, then we're, we're heading up to 290, 292 really easily um, because of that vacuum of space. You look at today's volume. In fact, if you look at, you know, you can see the volume is starting to decline. The volume today was less than uh, what we saw these last, past few days after this kind of surge. You know, you, you typically start to see it kind of slow down a little bit. Um, if you look at the daily chart here, um, you'll see that you know we got you know more. We got the one and a half times. You see the average is rising, and the volume average is rising again. Uh, if you look at the range today, here let's look at the range for SPY and the volume. Um, the volume there getting at 140 million share or 120, excuse me. 120 million or 140 sorry 140 million shares traded today the range at 6.78 points no gap to worry about uh, so let's take a look at that in context uh, 6.78 points is up here so it's obviously relatively bearish 140 million is right here you know more days like that uh, will be is not good right so if we do break into this range don't expect it to continue to look like today um, you know, we the VIX is relatively high now, um, and as it starts to pull back, as you can see, it breaking back below 20 at the end of the day, the moves up will get smaller, and that's normal. That's that doesn't mean that to not to not believe too much into that bullish bounce. It will be normal, and and when I said before that we didn't get that surge, you know, we didn't get volatility jumping up to 115 percent or more. Uh, on that drop like we saw last October when it busted out of the Bollinger Band with a big spike in volume as well. If you can see here on the daily chart, there it is where we did close above on that day in October, 115%. And we didn't get there this time in a big long upper shadow. In fact, we talked about that today in options inventory and how you know, the, the regular pattern in my options inventory class um, which is one of the classes that's only for the premium subscribers. Um, but we talked about the pattern of volatility and how that impacts how you build an inventory in terms of timing your entries into those trades. Big, long upper shadow here today on volatility. And that's, that can be a, that's very, very typical uh, to see that. I mean, there's a few exceptions where you close at the highs, um, but it's rare uh, for volatility to close uh, at their highs. All right, so before we look at some other charts, um, but just to summarize our technical outlook so far, uh, obviously we've had a bout of volatility here, largely driven by um, specific events, right? Specific uh, tweets, specific news items coming out. Uh, the macro picture, um, the micro picture hasn't changed very much. And we're going to talk about here uh, in just a minute um, how some of the inner market relationships uh, are driving things and how that might actually also spell out to be pretty bullish for for the markets. But when you see opportunities like uh, this bout of volatility, uh, they can be painful if we're too one-sided heading into it. And that's generally why the volatility gets the way it gets. Because again, the markets seek to, to cause the most pain. Um, and so if the market gets too one-sided, then we get moves like we saw. Uh, as short as it was, as 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 a big the pullback as big of a pullback as it was in small amount of time frame, uh, the market had gotten so one sided and so it created some pain to the downside, but it wasn't trend changing uh, pain. It got you know it's providing us an opportunity for those um, who have you know the capital available to take advantage of getting prices uh, that you might not have gotten uh, a week or two weeks ago. Uh, when the market was trading at all-time highs. So you don't get these dips very often like it is. At least these dips that are so extreme but not trend-changing um, dips. You don't get these very often. You, a few times a year you can get them. Uh, this happens to be one of them. Potentially happens to be one of them heading into uh, what may be a new intermediate rally, multi-month intermediate rally coming off of that. So 
What do you think? Do you agree with that assessment? Do you disagree? There's a link popping out right there in the top right corner of your screen. Click on that link. It opens up a poll. Then vote. Either agree or disagree. If you click disagree, comment down below in the uh, uh, comment section on what you're seeing uh, that would suggest otherwise. Maybe you're more bullish than I am. Maybe you're more likely. You might be more bearish than I am. Um, so share with us what you're seeing down in the comment section below. All right, now let's jump back into uh, what's uh, what's driving the price action today. You can see the biggest winner today was uh, real estate, gold, real assets, um, tangible assets. Emerging markets also had and foreign bonds had a good day to do relative to the U.S., uh, which ended up flat after coming off of its lows. A dollar ended up down, coming down from its highs, and crude oil ends up uh, continue to be relatively bearish. Um, if we take a look, one thing I wanted to take a look at, and I tweeted this out. Um, hopefully, you you saw this. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, uh, a few charts here, a, a couple of them uh, on TLT. And if you notice, I put up their volume with the standard deviation channel. This is three standard deviations from its average. Um, you know, from this from its normal patterns over this period of time. In this case, one year. I mean, that's an extreme amount of volume for TLT. Um, and it's not necessarily, I mean, you can see some of these set the lows. I mean, that set a low point there. You know, this one came, you know, we diverged to a higher high and then we, that ended that run. But this is a lot more of a parabolic move than we've seen on any of these other runs. When you get these parabolic moves in these asset classes, at least the ETFs that track some of these different asset classes, um, in this case, with a really bearish candle, opening up as much as we did, opening up with a tremendous gap to the upside, and then filling that gap uh, to the downside, kind of an exhaustion gap. Uh, so we talk about different gaps in my technical analysis class, um, uh, and one of them being exhaustion gaps. Exhaustion gaps get filled, um, whether it's in one day or two days or in a short amount of time. Well, this one didn't even take one day. It got filled intraday. Uh, with a pretty bearish candle, you can see the next layer of volume is all the way down here to about 132.5 from 140. There's room to the downside now, not for it to make a tremendous drop down into its value area, um, but you know if it can't hold 132.5, then 125 is on the table, you know, or 126 at that point. So, you know, that's a pretty that's that's a pretty um, exhaustive type of move in bonds and you see a very similar pattern in gold too so gold um, you know made a there's a big gap exhaustion gap with a big spike in volume here after a parabolic move and really this its parabolic move has gone a lot longer um, in this case you know you can say um, this volume here this gap right there occurred with more of a kind of a runaway type gap where you're breaking above a, a specific level with, with increased volume, but not extreme. The extreme occurred actually here, and that set the high point temporarily um, before this next, you know, this big kind of parabolic run with this spike in volume. Again, where can it pull back down to if it does, 132 and a half? Not necessarily that you would short these areas, but it kind of shows how overbought uh, safe havens are. Uh, and you saw that too here. You know I like to look at this chart, and this is a chart including today of, of the different sectors and their returns over the past couple hundred days. And you can see your safe havens are your biggest um, outperformers. Uh, real estate, utilities, staples is right up there with discretionary and technology over the past um, couple of years. Way outpacing telecom, way out or communication services, outpacing industrials, energy. Uh, outpacing healthcare significantly, financials. I mean, these are all your safe havens. They're pretty darn bullish. Uh, I mean, health, utilities, and real estate are the most bullish. And why is that the case? Well, if you were to put on here some of the major um, asset class ETFs, um, you can see and then pull up their their charts. This, this again over the last 200 days. Look how bullish Treasury bonds and gold are relative to equities. This is the S&P 500. There's your small cap stock, your um, your Russell 2000. This is not a typical pattern of, a, of an extremely overbought market. The market's not coming down. Uh, in fact, in our class today, I kind of compared um, the environment that we're in now relative to January 2018 and relative to even October of 2018. 
in in today's environment, this bullish environment that we had here at the end of July, wasn't even close to how overbought risk appetite was in October, and especially how overbought it was in January of 18. It was very, it was kind of an exhaustion move there for risk appetite. So here. And we, we didn't see even an overbought condition. In fact, the overbought condition we see and we actually still see now is in safe havens, in treasuries, in gold, in consumer staples, in utilities, in health and real estate. That's not typical um, pattern heading into recessions or into bear markets to see that type of move in those safety asset classes. Um, that's usually a sign uh, that we can rotate into more of those cyclical areas and risk appetite can rotate into favor, uh, which obviously would be bullish for equities uh, going forward from here. So that's why I'm not, I'm not convinced that this drop is the beginning of a market sentiment pullback like we saw in January of 18 and as we saw here where the orange line drops below 50. I mean, yes, we had a little bit of a news-related pullback, a bout of volatility that brought the intermediate line down below 50, but I think that's all we're going to get similar to what we saw in May with this little divergent low point, that this is just an intermediate pullback back down to a little bit lower of a, you know, in this case, a 62% instead of the 38%, but still a Fibonacci retracement, a normal Fibonacci retracement, a little bit deeper than normal, but still a good chance, especially on the red line, when you're looking at the long-term run that we're currently on, still a very good chance that we can bounce off of this and not skyrocket up to new highs, but continue to push your way higher. Um, you can see here uh, on the chart just how bullish TNX is. Uh, or, or how bullish bonds are. You know, I've shown you this chart before. This is the uh, weekly chart uh, for TNX. And let's just go to a regular uh, candle trend. Um, that we, we've only been more bullish on bonds in two periods of time. And those ended up being really bullish period for equities. I mean, really, in over the last 20 years, really, really bullish periods for equities uh, coming off of those low points. So. We're, we're significantly um, bearish on yields and significantly bullish on bonds. Um, and yeah, that might force the Fed into cutting rates. As you can see, you know, the odds of a, of a two basis point cut is a double today from 15% up to almost 30%. If you look at April, um, you say, okay, well, then we should be starting to get more and more rate hikes. Well, you know, again, 100% chance we'll get at least one, a 97% chance by next April we'll have at least two, an 80, 70, what, about 78% chance that we'll get a third one by April. But after that, you know, you're talking about, what would that be, 54 uh, plus 3%, so about a 40% chance that we'll have four. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six meetings. And right now the market's pricing in, out of those six meetings, only three uh, cuts and 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 that's three um, 25 basis point cuts. You might get two of those in one fell swoop, depending upon you know what happens in September. We saw the the, the uh, Bank of New Zealand um, uh, give a surprise 50 basis point cut today. And you look at the Yardini uh, economic surprise indicator. And you know, again, similar. Um, you know when you look at how bullish things are in terms of risk appetite. Again, early 2018, economic indicators were just extremely bullish in terms of beating their estimates to the upside. Late October 2018, we were, we were, bull, we were a lot more bullish than we are now. Uh, we we're coming off of some extreme bearish low points here. So again, the, the situation now coming off of these lows at the end of July, or coming off these highs, excuse me, at the end of July, even though they were all-time highs, Risk appetite was not nearly as bullish and overbought. Uh, in fact, again, you could almost argue that safe havens, um, risk aversion is overbought. And as you see in gold and bonds, extremely overbought, almost to the point where, you know, it's exhaustion moves in both of those that we're getting exhaustion gaps and both those safety assets uh, might start pulling back some of these parabolic gains here, or at least in the short term. In fact, if I were to look at the 200-day chart for this, so this goes back again to October the 19th. Uh, if I were to go back to this asset comparison chart and then change the time frame uh, to October uh, the 19th of 2018 and go over here to now, 
um, then you can see uh, look how bullish bonds and gold are I mean it's not like this is is this new right this they've already been more bullish and this looks like to be the blow off top uh, again well, the today is actually the blow off. You did get extreme volume today on both of those and, and exhaustion and potentially exhaustion gaps on both of those. So whether this ends up being the actual top, the blow off top or not, you can kind of see how it's setting up here and how bullish that can be. And, and you can see on the flip side how bearish crude oil has been and, and other you know, risk assets like uh, small cap stocks and other equities just really underperforming. Um, these uh, safe haven, including BWX, which is kind of a more of a global bond index with how how low yields are uh, globally. If you do the same thing for sectors, uh, sector comparison, and then go back to again October the nineteenth of last year up until now, then you can see very similar uh, development, right? You can see real estate is up twenty percent. You know the equity market's only up four percent. Um, um, real estate or utilities is up 12%. Real estate, excuse me, up 20%. Utilities, 12%. Staples, up 10%. Uh, technology is up 10%, which is pretty bullish, but that's nothing compared to what you're seeing in these safety asset classes. So um, you can see how bullish and how overbought risk aversion has been over the last, and this, again, not a short-term thing. That They've been the outperformers for most of this 200-day period because you see these declines in December, this, this was a market sentiment pullback here. Um, and then of course the um, pullback we had here. And if I were to go all the way back, even all the way to when the market peaked in January of um, January of 2018, um, you can see that's when the market peaked right there. Um, and we've it was a decline ever since. Um, again, you can see markets up one and a half percent since January of 2018. That's a year and a half almost. Uh, pretty much a year and a half and you've got 17 19 percent returns in utilities and real estate um, you can see these cyclical areas doing pretty well you can see the, the staples kind of matching the market and you see these dollar sensitive areas really lagging and these interest rate sensitive uh, financial sector really lagging as well so you know that's a pretty bullish uh, pattern for these interest rate sensitive areas that again is not necessarily the most bearish um, sent, you know, doesn't set up for the most bearish sentiment going forward from here because those are the areas you would move into. Uh, if the markets were to get more volatile, those are the areas that you're going to move into. Uh, so if the market does pull back, as we've seen, and everything drops because safety is so overbought, then it'll be quick, sharp pullbacks like we saw. It will set the low points relatively quickly, uh, and then you'll find your opportunities to uh, trade those extreme off of those extreme lows. So one stock uh, in, in the, one of those cyclical areas that's had a pretty significant pullback uh, during this decline, in fact, giving up a lot of its gains in one fell swoop essentially on Monday was Home Depot, pulling all the way down to 205 after briefly touching, really getting really close to 220 um, before July expiration. So it's a pretty decent uh, pullback. And, and if you take a look at you know what its Bollinger Bands and volume profile look like here, um, you can see it basically pulled down to its value area and still is above its value area, just like it's above its Ichimoku cloud, as you saw, and um, and providing opportunity and giving a little bit of a Harami pattern. Today's candle, the body of today's candle, even though it was an outside, we got to a lower low, the body here is still inside of the prior two days' candles, including Monday's, the big decline. And you can see how we're kind of trading at this low point the significant amount of volume that we've closed the last couple of days at the significant layer of volume here uh, acting as a support level above the value area. And of course, like the S&P, it's got a gap to fill if it's going to really be bullish or not. Uh, if you take a look at like its market forecast chart uh, for Home Depot, you can see um, it's got the, the light, the dark pink shading. Uh, uh, the moving average is not red like it is for the S&P 500 because it's still rising. Uh, so not as bearish. And you can see the short-term sentiments improving. Market sentiments still easily rising. Um, in fact, if you look at the, at the, of this last intermediate rally it's had, remember the S&P pulled back to 38% uh, of its Fibonacci retracement. If you look at, um, 
Home Depot, it only pulled back to 50% and it's closing still up above its 38%. So outside, above the uh, upper band and right around this old high point and a touch in this area as well. So a lot more bullish of a pattern um, on Home Depot than you see on the S&P in terms of how deep its pullback was. Uh, you look at its long-term chart here, um, you can see it's basically across, you know, it gave a red arrow so far at least, giving a red arrow on its moving average, on this 50-day moving average, which is typical of intermediate declines. Um, they don't necessarily have to get all the way to the 200. And you can see we're not, we've been more bullish on a long-term basis uh, than we are now, even though we're pretty strongly bullish as it is. Um, and you look at the DMI, which is another indicator we look at uh, for kind of intermediate type trend trade or intermediate trades. Uh, you can see that this little breakout has brought the orange line up above 25 and the blue line below 20. Um, not as low as, as the orange line got uh, during its pullback and not as low as either one of these other moves. So, you know, less of a pullback so far than what we saw in May of June, uh, as, whereas this orange kind of shows, you know, it was deep enough to provide, um, you know, some decent opportunity here. The blue line not falling is because we're closing well off of the lows uh, during this drop. Uh, so as bearish as it is, it could be a lot worse, and the fact that it's not provides us a good opportunity. So uh, we can say, okay, well, let's try to be directional. We can buy this uh, call option at September call option at the money, uh, 210, and then sell the 215 to reduce the cost uh, to $2.10. So uh, roughly probably around, you know, two, depending upon where you get filled in at here, around 220, 219. So... You know, if you take a look at that, you can say, okay, well, um, I've got a two better than one to one reward to risk ratio. And of course, you typically only put half of your long vertical at risk uh, to anyway. So you'll, even though you position size around the full 220 loss, if you can take 110, then that gives me my two to one reward to risk ratio. And, and considering um, the speculative nature of this, uh, this would be a trade that you would position size smaller than normal anyway. Um, and then again, take half the loss, take half the potential maximum loss if we end up breaking through those lows to the downside and not taking off. And if it takes off, then I got a good reward for uh, the risk that I'm willing to take. All right, so that wraps us up for today. Um, as always, I appreciate you watching our video today. I remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, mount, uh, click that thumbs up icon on the video down below and comment on what stands out to you. Uh, also remember to follow me on Twitter for more content in between videos from day to day uh, and join our Market Outlook community that we've got uh, created on Facebook as well as on our site at marketscholars.com. You can click and subscribe for free to our site. Um, as always, thank you again. Uh, for your time watching our videos tonight. Have a great rest of your evening, everybody, and we'll see you all next time.